Yo, it's good YouTube. I'm back with another video. Today we're doing what NBA players should have spent their um, first checks on. First off, starting with Tatum, he should have spent it on a better career in the playoffs. Lamelo, as you can see already, grills crazy, diamonds crazy. So yeah, I'm, spe I'm expecting to see a lot of outlandish stuff in this video. So. Let's get right into it. This is how most NBA players spend their first check. And Tyler Hero used his first check on a six-figure shopping spree, copping a custom 25-carat diamond chain for 55,000, spending a hundred thousand dollars in designer clothes. Hundred thousand on clothes, bro. What are you? Right. And most importantly, buying himself his dream car. A AMG. brand new 2020 Mercedes S63 AMG. And this thing wasn't cheap, because it cost Tyler over $200,000. Yeah, so our boy balled out. Sometimes, car is, spending your first... Car is eh. I don't know why I keep looking... I think my door's open. Hold on real quick. Mercedes is not that crazy, but still expensive. First check can go horribly wrong. Cause for Gilbert Arenas, his first check made him go homeless. In 2001, 19 year old Gilbert was convinced he'd go top 10 in the NBA draft. And in his mind, he was gonna sign a rookie deal worth at least 3.3 million. So a few months before the draft, Gilbert took out a $400,000 loan and balled out. But you think you think you're gonna go top 10? Like, shit, he I'm, took you know, a I'm, loan? I'm making millions, you know? So I bought an Escalade, had five TVs in it, four 12s, had the suede. I seen Gary Payton with suede on the top. I want the suede roof, you know? So I spent all of that money. He took yeah. a Yeah, Gilbert really thought he made it. But at pre-draft tryouts, he ruined everything. Not only did he refuse to take part in mandatory workouts, but he also made sure to tell every NBA team that his lifelong dream was to be an international pimp. <sighs> yes, he really said that. And of course, NBA scouts were not amused. So instead of going top 10, his ass fell all the way to the second round, signing for 330,000 his first year. That's 70,000 less than what he owed. This man was broke broke. I couldn't even drive back and forth to the arena. Yeah. So I had to stay at the arena sometimes. Uh -huh. You slept in the arena. Give it arenas. Sorry. I slept yeah. in the arena. A professional NBA player. <laughs> slept in the so arena. Sleep was basically homeless. Basically, take yeah. me back to the park yeah, days. Yeah. Again. I'm basically homeless. <laughs> right. But, but I just couldn't afford so the gas. Up. When they did my budget, I can only spend $500 a month. <laughs> For you know, that's gas money, <laughs> gas money, girlfriend, two dogs. Like I, I don't, I don't right. have any money. Damn, Gilbert really fumbled the bag, but not as that bad as Lamelo Ball. That boy wanted, that boy really wanted to international pimp. He did not have hoop dreams. The hoop dreams came to him. Oh, because the way Melo spent his first check is getting him sued for millions. Yeah. In 2019, right after graduating high school, LaMelo hired publicist Amber Johnson to find him some big money brand deals, promising her 10% of the profits. And over the next few weeks, she went to work, pitching a LaMelo documentary to Fox, landing him a sponsorship on Caffeine TV, and most importantly, negotiating LaMelo's biggest offer yet, a deal with Puma worth $10 million. But oddly enough, when LaMelo heard about the offer, he told his publicist to decline and end negotiations immediately. So, Amber canceled the deal and never spoke to Puma again. But in 2020, something suspicious happened. A month before the NBA draft, it was announced that Melo had signed his first big contract, a $100 million endorsement deal with none other than Puma. And after securing the bag, Lamelo spent big, copping a $276,000 for- Wait. Puma had a hundred million. For Lamelo. Million dollar endorsement deal with none other than Puma. And after securing the bag, 
Lamelo spent big, topping a $276,000 Ferrari F8 Tributo, a million dollar Richard Mill, and a $2.6 million condo in the heart of Charlotte. Well, Melo was already rich before this, so we already knew this. He was rich since he was in high school, but a hundred mi a hundred, yeah, I mean, Puma didn't really have anybody, but where are they getting a hundred mil from? To drop on one person? I mean, I don't even know if his shoes are good. I've never seen them. Or actually, I've seen his shoes, but I never like wore them or anything, so I don't know if they're good or not. Mello was dropping money on everything. Well, everything except his publicist, who claims she didn't receive a dime from Lamella. Not for the caffeine deal, not for the documentary, and not for the Puma deal. So in January of 2022, she decided to sue Lamello for 10 You can take it, you know. You deserve it anyway, but you know. 10 mil? He signed for 100 mil? He has a deal with... He's already with the Hornets for how much, how much more? He's doing other endorsements while... He has a commercial with what? What was the commercial? A&T? AT&T? I said A&T. Was it AT&T? I think it was AT&T. With LeVar? 10 mil million dollars and our boy Melo is still battling it out in court to this day but look not every NBA player blows their first bag on themselves because Zion Williamson spent his first check saving thousands of families from disaster see in March of 2020 during Zion's rookie season COVID forced the NBA to shut down entirely leaving tens of thousands of arena workers without jobs overnight People living paycheck to paycheck had their income ripped away, and with no other jobs available, they were left feeling hopeless. The saying, life can change in an instant, is as true as it gets. So, with people desperate for help, rookie Zion pulled through and changed lives, saying, A mother has always set an example for me about being respectful to others. So today, I'm pledging to cover the salaries for all Smoothie King Center workers for the next 30 days. Yeah. That means Zion donated at least $300,000, all from his first check. Nice Damn, guy, Zion. the man Zion knows how to spend his money. He needs to teach other NBA players how it's done, because the stories we got coming up are on another mm. level. Yeah, Jerry, tell me about what the... But before we get to that, we gotta talk about Kelly Oubre, because this dude is being blackmailed for millions, all because of his first check. See, in 2015, right after signing his rookie contract, Kelly went out and dropped $12,000 on two new puppies. I gotta stop pausing this video, but... If I said 10 mil was not that much for LaMelo, 12,000 on two puppies is probably still crazy, though. But... Saint and Soul. And over the next few years, he built an unbreakable bond with his dogs, even taking them on the road for away games. But in 2019, something terrible happened. After an ugly breakup, Kelly's ex-girlfriend went psycho, refusing to leave his house, slashing his tires, and worst of all, kidnapping his dog. That's nothing. That's nothing. I mean, it's Kelly Uber. <laughs> pause but Kelly Oubre if you break up with him this woman was out of her mind but to be honest Kelly for a pretty good reason it turns out his ex went completely psycho cuz Kelly never dropped a like and subscribe to the channel yeah that's right I got, got this me. crazy chick on speed dial and you if you me. ain't subbed then she's gonna steal your pets and eat them you trust me, me dog you don't want that to happen so just go ahead and subscribe okay but anyways Kelly was heartbroken so he called the cops and even filed a lawsuit desperately trying to get his dogs back but somehow, she was able to keep custody of Saint and Soul, and it seemed like Kelly's situation couldn't get any worse. Until January of 2021, when Kelly's ex allegedly threatened to keep Saint and Soul unless he paid her $3 million. 
So yeah. Kelly filed another lawsuit claiming he was being blackmailed, and he's still fighting for his dogs back to this day. Man, I just feel bad mm -hmm. for Kelly. But who I don't I feel right. bad for is yeah. LeBron, because no. this dude turned his first check into millions of, wait, no, billions of dollars. Back in 2003, yeah, right. just a month before He's the NBA draft, 18-year-old LeBron signed his first big contract, a deal with Nike worth $90 million. Mm -hmm. And with that kind of money, you'd think a teenager would have just blown too. it all. But instead, LeBron decided to hire his best friend, Maverick Carter, as a business partner for 50 k a year. This was genius, because Maverick went on to close all kinds of big money deals for LeBron, turning a 1% stake in Beats into 30 million, creating LeBron's Spring Hill Company, an entertainment brand worth 725 mil. And in 2015, Maverick negotiated the biggest contract in NBA history, a lifetime deal with Nike worth a ridiculous $1 billion. God damn, this man LeBron hired a financial wizard. So inspirational. But not everyone's as fortunate as LeBron. Cause what Trey Young bought with his first check. Got a billion dollar deal. That's probably for life too. There's no way. Hold on. His contract in NBA history. A lifetime deal with Nike worth a ridiculous one. Huh. This was in 2016. I do not keep up with all these deals, bro. <laughs> I just watch them play. Billion dollars. God damn. This man LeBron hired a financial wizard. So inspirational. But not everyone's as fortunate as LeBron. Because what Trey Young bought with his first check got his ass clowned in front of his entire team. See, in 2018, just a month after being drafted, Trey used 166000 of his first check to cop his dream car. A brand new 2019 Audi R8. All right. It's here. And uh, this thing is crazy. 600 horsepower, custom matte right, black so paint, tough. zero oh to 60 gosh. in 3.1 seconds. Know, if Trey wasn't on the Definitely. court, he was whipping the Audi. Until a few weeks later, when during team practice, his teammates secretly stole his car and trashed it. <laughs> I guess the rookies got popcorn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yeah, Yo, that's I remember crazy. This. I, I thought, thought you meant the teammates crashed the car. That's high level popcorn. They Trey. Okay. okay. Trey. They trashed it. I thought they said crash it. They got me. Trey might be smiling, but I know his ass is crying on the inside. And according to this fan, his R8 still smells like popcorn. Damn. But at least Trey had a car. Because how Giannis spent his first check literally put him on the streets. Yeah. In 2013, when Giannis signed his rookie deal, he wanted to give back to his family. So right before a game in Milwaukee, he took a taxi cab to a local bank, and that's where he wired all of his money back home to Greece. Every last dollar. And you know, that's nice and all, but there was one problem. This man has no car, no money for a cab, and he has a game in 30 minutes. So, a boy started hauling ass. The six foot nine famous NBA player was sprint. He was not that famous his rookie year, I'll be honest. Ding down he the streets of Milwaukee one, to try and make it to his ago. own game. But it turns out he didn't have to run very far, because after just a mile, Giannis caught the attention of one generous Bucks fan. First call day of the season we're out shopping and i see a, like two blocks away i see a very tall person running and i think looks like might be Giannis. he is running and he's wearing jeans and a windbreaker and it is 18 degrees out and i say can we offer him a ride he says sure he climbs into the back seat of our car and we have a really little car we have a honda fit right yeah so he's and he's sitting in the back seat all like Folded. Sideways, knees to chin. I mean, it's the only way he could have fit in. Yeah, Giannis's pretzel looking ass didn't have a dollar to his name. And neither did Shaq. Because this man spent his entire first check, one million dollars, 
in just 30 minutes. How is that oh, even yeah. possible? Well, Walmart in 1992, story? before even making it to the NBA, Shaq signed a trading card deal with Classic uh. for a million dollars. And the very next day, he went on the craziest shopping uh. spree of his life. Yeah. I always tell people this story. I, I spent a million dollars in 30 minutes. I always wanted a black on black Mercedes Benz. So I go get it, boom, 150,000. My father said, that's nice, where's mine at? I was like, you know what, you're right. Go get the exact same car for him. We get home, my mom's a little jealous. Where's mine at? You know what? So we go and we get her the smaller Benz version. So we got three Benzes and, and then after that, after I drop them off, I was like, I need some jewelry. So I, I buy a big old diamond ring oh similar to this one. Gosh. I get another ring for the other hand. I get a bracelet. I get some diamond earrings. I get a necklace. And I get a call the next day from the uh, bank manager and he says, uh, I need to have a conversation with you. So I come up there and shows me the spreadsheet of where all the money went. I forgot about the agent fees. I, I forgot about FICA. I forgot about state tax and sales tax. So I probably netted like 700000 But I didn't know that. I thought I had $1 million. Yeah, this dude forgot about taxes. Man, Shaq's got to regret that one. But I can't say the same for John Morant, because he spent his first check on his parents. And it changed their lives forever. See, in the early 2000s, when John was just a kid, his parents knew he was special. So much so that not only did his mom give up her biology career, but his dad walked away from pro basketball just to train him, thinking that one day, Ja could what become one of the greatest players in NBA history. You know, you know. And as Ja got older, his parents pushed him every single day, from backyard NBA drills to having him play kids twice his age. Hell, they even put a basketball hoop in the living room all to help him make it to the NBA Bro. by 29. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far from for my for my job, but <laughs> if you got hoop dreams, boy, boy. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. But 19, John had officially achieved his dream, being the second it, overall pick in the NBA draft, owing it all to his parents. And Jai, you always said that your dad gave up his basketball dreams to help you accomplish yours. So tell your dad what this means. It means a lot for both of us. We both know what I've been through. I don't want to get a little emotional up here, man, but I just want to thank him for everything he done for me. Um, he made me who I am today, and I'm just thankful for it all. Great job, man. Great job. And after signing a $39 million rookie deal, Ja figured, what better way to blow his first check than by showing his parents some love? Not only copping them both brand new whips, oh, a Hellcat for his dad and an Audi for his mom, so but also ago. buying them their dream home and worth $2.1 million. This place has six bedrooms, eight bathrooms, it's got a backyard pool, a home theater. Hell, it's even got a tennis court. All of this just to show his parents how much he appreciates them. Sure. Damn, man, it's beautiful. <laughs> But what's not beautiful is Shaq's diet. Yeah, this man ate so bad, it almost killed him. This is an intro for the next one. Uh, kill him. And don't even get me started on Zion. His ass is getting so fat, he's gonna eat himself out of the league. Oh, huh. you wanna hear more about that? Then no click video. this video Wait, right here. Figure. This is what NBA play. <sighs> another day, another reaction. I did not know that the, the, uh, the billion dollar deal was in 2006 and like i said i do not pay attention to deals i knew the one with puma but i did not know it was a hundred mil <sighs> these companies just have money just waiting for players bro yeah that's the end of the video like subscribe and see y'all next time